Old Brooklyn Christian Church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recover of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed old brooklyn christian church okay, amen well i'd like to welcome everyone to old brooklyn christian church today's message is the purpose of jesus amen. how many know that we all should know the purpose of jesus amen. If you declare yourself to be a Christian, but yet you don't know the purpose of Jesus, then you don't know the purpose of yourself and that which you claim yourself to be. You got to know the purpose of Jesus. You got to know why, why did he leave uh, heaven? He was in heaven where we're trying to get to. He was in the presence of his heavenly father where we're trying to get to he was in a place where there was no tears there was no sorrow and yet he left that position to come down to this germ infested sin infested wicked planet of earth where he was disrespected he was misunderstood. He was physically and verbally and emotionally abused. He was under constant threat and under constant danger. And again, my question to you is the purpose of Jesus. Do you know the purpose of Jesus? Why did he go through all those things? And it, once you understand the purpose of Jesus, and it's then that you'll start to understand your purpose. Why are you here? Because the Bible says that we are created in the image of God. Amen. So once you understand the image of God, then you could understand your own image and what you're supposed to look like. Because a lot of folks don't look like the image of God. They look like the image of the devil. Amen. Amen? So we want to make sure that when we look in the mirror, we don't see horns growing out of our heads. Amen. We want to see a halo above our head. Amen. A simple definition of purpose, which we should all know, but just to highlight a little bit. The purpose means the reason for which something is done. The reason which something is done or created or for which something exists. Amen. So again, we're going to get into the purpose of Jesus. The ultimate purpose of Jesus was not to make us at peace with all people but God. I want, you to, uh, I want you to understand that. So in other words, the purpose for Jesus coming down this earth was not so that we could have unconditional peace with everyone at all times. That wasn't the reason. Because check this out, even atheists who don't believe in Jesus can still be at peace with one another by the way that they treat one another or the way that they compromise with one another or the way that they uh, please one another or the way that they live. Even unbelieving uh, atheists, you got Satanists can be at peace with one another. You got Muslims and all kinds of cults that are at peace with one another. So that was not the purpose of Jesus. The ultimate purpose of Jesus was so that we can be at peace with God because you could be at peace with one another and not be at peace with God. And the only way you're ever going to be at peace with God is through Jesus Christ. There is no one that goes to the Father but through Jesus Christ because he is the only door. It's not through Muhammad. It's not through uh, Muslims. It's not through Mormons. It's not through Jehovah Witnesses. It's through Jesus that we can only be at peace with God. So I want to say it again. The ultimate purpose of Jesus was not to make us at peace with all people but God. Now, did Pastor give you a license to be at war with everyone? That's not what I'm saying. Let's see what the scripture says. In fact, I can share what the Bible says for those of you that don't know. It. The Bible says, if it be at possible. So look at the condition. It's not saying it's always going to be possible. It's saying if it be possible, be at peace with all men. But sometimes it's not possible. It also says follow peace with all men. So in other words, if there's no peace with them having peace with God, then we have to remove ourselves. The Bible also says withdraw the evil person from amongst you. It does not say be at peace with the evil person. 
It also says when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. That, that's God's doing, not ours. You see what I'm saying? When you, are, when you are at peace with God, God can allow your enemies to be at peace with you. But his ultimate purpose was not about peace with one another. See, in the Catholic Church, what they do is they'll say, peace be with you. Right? Peace be with you. Also with you. Peace be with you. Look, you can't have peace with someone who's not serving God. We have fellowship with one another as we are on one accord, as we are walking in the Lord. Amen? Amen. In Luke 12, 51, it says, Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. I tell you, nay. Nay. So there are a lot of folks that are preaching and teaching that, that we are to have peace on this earth. They're creating a false gospel or unbiblical reality that is simply not true. So, and Jesus was simply saying this so that folks would know his real purpose. It says, suppose ye that I am come to give you peace on earth. I tell you nay. Nay means no. He's saying my purpose is not to give you peace on earth. That's not what I came here for. You understand my purpose? It's not to give you peace on earth. He said, I tell you, nay, but rather division. Jesus, Jesus is saying, is hey, saying my, hey purpose my purpose is, is not, not to give you to give peace, you peace on, earth. on earth. My purpose, my purpose is, is to give, give you give division. You division. For from henceforth, there shall be five in one house divided against two and two against three. In other words, He's saying that in your house, there's going to be a division. Now, is pastor saying you need to go home and start war with your wife? No, that's not what I'm saying. Is pastor telling you to go home and cuss out your mom or your sister? No, that's not what it's saying. It's simply saying this, that as you serve God and you refuse to compromise with the people in your house, there's going to be a division. In other words, when I became a Christian, there were people who did not respect me being a Christian. And not only did they not respect me being a Christian, but they tried to tempt me to get involved, not only license their sin, but they wanted me to sin so that they felt comfortable in their sin. And when I refused to sin, it caused a division. See, there is unity and agreement. When you stop agreeing with other people's sin, that disagreement to their sin causes division. And as you become a real Christian, a real Christian, there is going to be real division in your house. Now check this out. This Bible verse is talking about your physical house, your home, where you lay your head at, right? But I looked it up in the Greek. And for the sake of time, it also means, look here, it also means, uh, I have to raise this a little bit. So when it's talking about that there's going to be division in the house, it's talking about, see this right here? It says that of a certainty of a dwelling, literal and figurative location of family. And a home or a temple. So in other words, when, when Jesus is saying right here, he said that there's going to be division. He's talking about not only in your house, but in your family, right. your cousins, your aunts, your uncles. He said, I come to bring division, two against three and three against two. That the purpose of God is there's not going to always be unity. There's going to be real division. And so some Christians are prepared for that. They, they, they love their family more than they love their relationship with God. And just like Fruit Ninja, there's going to be a separation. The purpose of Jesus to being at peace with some people costs us being at peace with God costs nothing. Being at peace with some people costs us. 
Being at peace with God costs us nothing. You understand that? So in other words, you can't pay the price to be at peace with God. Jesus died on the cross as an intercession and an interceder so that we have an opportunity to be at peace with God. You can't make that peace on your own with God. Jesus did it. Amen. If Jesus didn't do it, then we didn't need him to come and die on the cross. We didn't need his purpose to come and leave his estate from heaven. But we did. We could not be at peace with God. We couldn't burn incense. We couldn't burn animals. We couldn't uh, give our bodies to be burned. The only thing we can do is put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ. And this is where our peace with God costs. And it cost us nothing. But being at peace with some people will cost you your soul. It'll cost you everything. In Luke 12, 53, it says, The Father shall be divided against the Son, and the Son against the Father, and the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, and the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Now, am I saying, again, we should go out and cause a whole bunch of arguments with all of our family? If they're Christians, there's not going to be division. See, if, you're, if your natural family becomes your spiritual family, then there's going to be a stronger unity than if no one was a spiritual family anyways. Amen. So this is what Jesus is saying. He was actually pro prophesying of what was going to happen. He knew that because of the Holy Spirit, he knew that because of our new born-again nature in God, that there was going to be so much division because there were going to be people in the family that wanted to sin that wanted to live a life of sin and didn't want to serve God. And he knew that it was going to cause division. See, we're not called to be at peace with everyone if it requires us compromising and putting ourselves in a situation where we're tempted to sin. You see that? If you're in a situation where your family is tempting you to sin, then there needs to be a separation. Jesus used the gift of healing to show off the power of his Father. There are some churches that preach and teach and display that the epitome or the, the whole point or the purpose of Jesus is to heal the flesh. And so what they do is they have these big theatrical healing services and they have all these theatrical prayer lines where people are running down the aisles and the pastor's smacking anointing oil all over them and they're rolling all over the floor. And I'm not mad about it, but that is not the purpose of Jesus is to heal the flesh. Because even those that Jesus healed in the flesh, their flesh is still going to eventually get sick again or it's going to die. His goal was, his ultimate purpose was not to heal flesh. It was to heal the soul. Amen. It was to heal the spirit. It was to heal the heart. It was to heal the mind. It was to heal our character. It was to heal our wicked ways. So that's why we don't overemphasize. But here, check this out. I believe with all my heart that God can heal our body of all types of diseases. I know it. I've experienced it. It's happened through me and to me. Amen. But again, that's not the epitome of God. It's not the epitome of God. That wasn't his ultimate purpose. In John 9, 1, look at, look at what it says. Now, this is, a this is a scripture or an example of the healing of Jesus. It says, and Jesus passed by and saw a man which was blind from his birth. So he was born blind. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents? So they, right off the bat, started accusing this man from sinning, and then they started accusing his parents of sinning. Well, they weren't doing that for no reason. They knew that if you kept sinning, there was going to be a judgment from that sin, both spiritual and natural, and that because of sin, there would be sickness that would come on people. So some people are sick because of their sin. Yep. Amen. And they knew that. 
So there was a reason why they were saying that. In fact, when we go into the communion, the, the, the communion scriptures that we read, it says, for this cause, many are sick amongst you. Because of sin. So sin has consequence. So when you keep sinning against God, there can occur a natural sickness. So that's why his disciples said, who did sin? This man or his parents, that he was born blind. And Jesus answered, neither. Neither had this man sinned nor his parents. But that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it was day and night cometh when no man can work. So Jesus was saying, look, the reason why this man was born sin, I am going to show off the power of God. It's going to operate through me. And the purpose of God was not to just show off the power of God through him, but it was so that people would have faith in who he was, that they would know that he was the real Messiah, that he was the called of God, the anointed of God, the child of God, so that when they saw his healing power, they would trust in him. But some people would miss him and they would only focus on the healing of the flesh, thereby missing everything in the whole purpose of Jesus. I'm, I, want you, I want to slow down. Who did sin, Master? He said, neither, but that the works of God should be made manifest. It wasn't about healing this blind man. He, it didn't matter whether he was blind, whether he was deaf, whether he's crippled. And none of that mattered. It was just an opportunity that God used to show who Jesus was. And now you got churches that miss the whole everything. They miss the whole purpose. They make it less about who Jesus is and the purpose of Jesus, and they make it all about uh, uh, showing off the gift of healing. Amen. There are going to be a lot of people that are healed and that operate in the gift of healing who still end up in hell, Amen. which is why Jesus said, many are going to come to me in the last day. Lord, Lord, didn't I do all these great works? Didn't I cast out demons? Didn't I all do it? And he'll say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. You never knew me. So it's not about healing the flesh. You miss everything. I'm not denying that he can and will and does heal the flesh. But there's going to be a lot of cancer-free, AIDS-free, healthy as an ox people who end up in hell. On that note, there's going to be a ton of disease-infested, crippled, lame, missing one leg, one arm, half their brain gone, eyes gone, can't speak, full of AIDS and all kinds of diseases who end up in heaven. Jesus didn't come to entertain us, but to convict us of sin and preach repentance. What is the purpose of Jesus? Did he come here to entertain us, to mesmerize us with signs and wonders? Is, is he a, a, a clown? Because some churches make the purpose of Jesus about entertainment. If you come to our church, we'll serve you the perfect cup of joe. If you come to our church, we'll have all types of entertaining events for you. And we'll do all types of watercoloring and all types of things. And I'm not trying to demonize watercoloring, but is that the purpose of why Jesus was spit on and beat up and stabbed in the side and, and tortured on the cross and the crown of thorns? Is that the purpose of why he came so that we can get into watercoloring? No, no, no. <laughs> now, I like to watercolor, but I recognize that's not the purpose of Jesus. Yeah, if you set me down at a nice restaurant, they got watercoloring there as you wait for your food. But that's not the purpose of Jesus. Jesus didn't come to entertain us, but to convict us of sin. And he came to preach repentance. And Matthew 12, 38 says, Then a certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would... See a sign from thee. And you have that same religious spirit. You got it in the Pentecostal church all over, running rampant. Master, pastor, show us a sign. 
Entertain us. Lay hands on us. Let us roll around the floor. Show us a sign. We want to be entertained. They didn't know the purpose of what Jesus came for. These were people that had theology degrees. They had all kinds of degrees and credentials, and all that education still did not give them the revelation of the purpose of Jesus. All they, they could quote all the scribe, they could quote all the law, they could quote all the rituals, they could quote all of it, but even then they still missed the purpose of the scriptures, the purpose of Jesus. Jesus said, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have life, but they testify of me. You could read the Bible, you could have it memorized and still miss the purpose. Because that purpose is revealed when we have a broken heart. That purpose is revealed and when we have humility. That's why Jesus said, seeing they don't see. Because I have blinded the eyes. I've confounded the wise. Jesus said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. So Jesus was saying, Look, I'm not a clown. I'm not here to do a juggling act. I'm not here. Here, hey, here check this out. Jesus could have showed that. You, look here. Moses, when he walked up to the Red Sea, the Red Sea split. God rained down plagues to release the Israelites. When Jesus was betrayed with a kiss, he said, Peter, put your sword away. Don't you know I can call a legion of angels? Jesus could have showed them a sign that would have made their eyes spin to the back of their head. He could have showed them a sign that they never saw. But he was saying, I didn't come, that's not my purpose. But he said unto them, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Now you got some churches, that's all they can do is signs. That's all they got. They don't got no holiness. They don't got no repentance. They don't got no conviction. They don't got no truth in the word of God. But they got all the signs because they don't know the purpose of Jesus. They think the purpose of Jesus is to fill up a building. Last time I checked, too short. Shorty the pimp could do that. Snoop Doggy Dog. P. Diddy. They can fill up a building and make a crazy sign. But Jesus said, an evil and adulterous generation seek after a sign. And what did he say? No sign shall be given to it but the sign of prophet Jonas, or Jonah. What was his sign? Here's his sign. You want a sign? You want to know the purpose of Jesus? Repent! That's the sign. That's it. Repent or perish. And the men of Nineveh shall rise in the judgment with this generation, shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. So in other words, Jesus is saying, look, the greatest thing was not about a sign. The greatest thing was that Jonah preached repentance and the whole city repented and they were saved from the wrath of God. That's the sign that's coming. In other words, if you don't want to repent, hold your breath because the wrath of God is going to rain down on your head. It's not going to be water drops. Jesus came to feed us spiritual truth that will guide our soul on the narrow road. You hear that? Jesus came to feed us spiritual truth that will guide our soul on the narrow road. Last week, days ago, I was at a bank and I was having small conversation with the bank teller. And they asked, what were my plans for the, the New Year's? 
And I said, I don't know, probably go home and rest. And then I returned the question, what are your plans for the New Year's? And the bank teller said, I'm going to party. I'm going to get drunk. I'm going to party the whole day away. I'm going to party the whole holiday. I got two days off from the bank, and I'm going to make it count, and I'm going to get drunk and have fun. And, and, and then she closed the conversation with, I like your tie. And I happened to be wearing a tie that, that said, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. And then she had the audacity to invite me to her church. And then she said, you should come to my church. You led the conversation with getting drunk and partying. And then you closed it. I never told her I was a pastor. Guess what? I never will. And I didn't invite her to the church. So here they are at this church. She represents. And now check this out. She ain't a brand new Christian. She said, I was raised from birth in this church. Now, no doubt if you go to that church, they're going to have coffee galore. They'll have several different types of croissants. You can sit there in, in, the, in the coffee room and hold your pinky out. They probably have all kinds of Chuck E. Cheese-like activities. But the only thing that they don't got is the truth. You probably have to fight to get a seat. Jesus came to feed us spiritual truth and guide us on the narrow road. Now I can tell you what they're preaching at the church. Oh, don't judge one another. Jesus came to love you just the way you are. Once saved, always saved. You could get right with God when you're Madeline's age and you can live a life of criminal activity for the next 70 years and you're good. Don't make them feel uncomfortable. Let's be politically correct. That's their whole sermon. Look at this. <laughs> Jeremiah 23. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. When God says woe, he means he's warning them. That is a strong warning. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep. Now, if your pastor looks like this, now you can't really appreciate it. His eyes are like crossed. He's got ponytails. <laughs> Woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, said the Lord. Therefore, thus said the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. You have scattered my flock and have driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, said the Lord. In other words, God is saying, I have a mighty, wrathful judgment set aside for those wicked pastors. All those pastors preaching uh, uh, once saved, always saved, and preaching that it's okay to sin and be politically correct and not convict anyone and not try to preach the word of God. God is saying, I have wrath reserved just for them. They, they are profiting at the backs of the people. They're prospering financially at the expense of the people. And God's saying, woe unto you. I will rain down judgment. He's going to hold them to a high accountability. Right now in this life, it may be all fun and games. But he's saying, I, you destroy my people. That's not the purpose of Jesus. And that lady that I ran into at the bank, she, she's the fruit the fruit, calling themselves a Christian, inviting people to church, but then bragging about getting drunk and partying, leading people to hell. It's Old Brooklyn Christian Church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to preach.
proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recover of sight for the blind and to release 